Okay, so let's see if you have the math knowledge and skills to solve this math problem. And the question is, is can you find the lengths of this triangle? All right, now the figure here, obviously we have a triangle. This side is three, this side is x plus two, and this side right here is x plus three. Of course, this uh, right here, this little symbol, is a huge clue on how to solve this particular problem, but I don't want to really tell you too much because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem. So if you can figure this out, and feel free to use a calculator, by the way, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, in fact, we have a right triangle, and this is a huge clue in order to solve this particular problem. And we're looking for the sides of this uh, triangle. We know, of course, this side is three, but what is this side and what is this side? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is this is a three, four, five right triangle, also uh, known as a Pythagorean. Uh, triple, but we'll talk more about that in a second. But if you were able to solve this problem, we definitely have to celebrate by giving a nice slow happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving right triangle war problems using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, this is what we're going to need in order to solve this problem. And uh, if you, of course, you know, you solve this, that tells me that you know a thing or two about right triangles and particularly uh, the Pythagorean theorem. This very well may be one of the most important widely used um, theorems in all of mathematics. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the solution here. And if you are like, I have no idea what you're talking about, well, just stick with me for a couple minutes and you'll be an expert as well. All right, so here is the problem. The key to solving this problem is um, uh, recognizing that this is a right triangle, okay? Uh, this is gonna make uh, this problem much, much easier to solve. Now, what is a right triangle? Well, when you have a figure of a triangle and it's like a little square in a corner, this indicates that it is right, okay? Which means that that angle is 90 degrees, okay? Now, there's all different sorts of triangles you could have in a triangle like this. So this angle right here is more than 90 degrees. And this is important because if we have a 90 degree right triangle or 90, a 90 degree angle in a triangle, we have a right triangle. We know a ton about right triangles. Okay, and they're very, very uh, important in geometry. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, what we need to know for uh, this particular problem. But again, when you have a right triangle indicated by this little thing right here, you want to be thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you didn't have a right triangle and you had something that was like, for example, an obtuse uh, triangle where an angle might be, let's say, like 120 degrees, there are some other things that you can uh, bring to bear to solve these type of triangle problems, namely uh, the law of sines, the law of cosines, but that's a little bit more advanced uh, than what we need. And uh, I'll give you some suggestions if, in fact, you need to, uh, you know, solve triangle problems using the law of sines and the law of cosines. Uh, these are hugely important in math as well, but we don't need them. We can just simply use uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so again, this very well may be one of the most important, in my opinion, now, of course, I only bring this up because the Pythagorean theorem is widely used in algebra, al uh, geometry, analytic uh, geometry, trigonometry. I mean, you have to understand this theorem. Now, of course, uh, this is derived from a famous mathematician, Pythagoras, but basically his theorem is the following. Okay, so he, we have a right triangle. Okay, so again, we have this little notation down there. This is 90 degrees. Now we have the sides of a right triangle, A, B, and C, but the most important thing about understanding these sides is that the longest length 
of a right triangle is always called the hypotenuse. Okay, this is the hypotenuse, and it's going to be opposite of where the right angle is at. Okay, so opposite meaning this way, but you can always uh, easily recognize it. It's always the longest uh, side of the right triangle, but you need to remember that because that will be our variable C. Okay, so what the Pythagorean theorem states is that if we square the shorter sides, okay, so this would be A squared, okay, if we square that and we add it to the square of this other side, that would be B squared, that's going to be equal to, and we add these two things up, these two sides up, we're going to square that plus the square of this, we add up these two values, that's going to be the same as the square of the hypotenuse, okay, so A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And if you have any two values here, okay, if we have these two values, we can easily solve for this. If we have this value, we don't know this side, we, and we have this side, we can solve for that. But in this particular situation, uh, we have some variables going on here. So we're going to have to use some algebra uh, along with the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. So let's go ahead and take the next step, and let's identify our a, b, and c. Okay, so the uh, most important thing uh, here, again, is to know that the longest side is the hypotenuse will always be C when it comes to the Pythagorean theorem. This side could be A, or this side could be A, or this side could be uh, B, but it doesn't make a difference. I'll call this A, I'll call this B. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, and we're going to use these expressions right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared is the following. Okay, so a squared is going to be uh, x plus 2 squared. So this is our a squared plus b squared, okay, is what? Well, b is just 3. Okay, so that's going to be 3 squared. And c squared is going to be x plus 3 squared. All right, so now what we have is an algebraic uh, equation. So really what it comes down to at this point in the problem is can you solve this equation? Now if you are studying uh, a um, geometry, like in other words you're taking a full geometry course, or if you intend to take geometry, you must first uh, learn algebra, okay? Uh, at least one year of algebra because there is a lot of algebra in geometry. Okay, so this is what it comes down to. Can you solve for x? Because if we can solve for x here, we're going to be able to get these values, right? So if we solve for x, we're like, okay, I know the answer for x. So whatever x is, x plus 2 is this side, and then x plus 3 will be this side. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. But uh, I wouldn't stop this lovely math video if it wasn't important. It's, of course, important for me to get your support, but it's important for me because I need your support to help other people. Okay, I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years, over 2,000 plus, well over 2,000 videos from basic math to advanced math. I am not going to stop. Okay, I have tons of content out there. And I have, um, uh, right now, it's like 514,000 subscribers at the time of this video, millions and millions of views. You know, I take pride in that because I'm like, I want to help as many people as I possibly can. So I'm just trying to reach a broader audience because a lot of people out there are struggling in mathematics. So if they connect with my teaching style and if I'm able to help them or able to help you, well, then that's my reward for being on YouTube. But I can't do it without your support. Your support, excuse me. So I need you to subscribe. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. All right, so we have x uh, a squared. So let's just kind of go back to our setup here. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. Of course, we are using the actual uh, values in this particular right triangle, and we want to solve for x. All right, so let's go ahead and take this part right here, x plus 2 squared. What is this equal to? Well, we're going to have to uh, use the FOIL method. So x plus 2 times x plus 2 is the same thing as x plus 2 squared. And here you can just use the FOIL method. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then we have 2x uh, again right here. So 2x and 2x is 4x. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Now, if you are struggling with the algebra, just check out all my um, the various courses. I'm, gonna leave, I'm going to leave the uh, links to them in the description below. So I would say for those of you that 
or you know at this level of math, you definitely want to check it like check out like my Algebra One course, okay? Uh, because that's what you need to take before you take a full geometry course. Which course, if you're in, uh, you know I have that as well. Okay, so x plus two squared or x plus two times x plus two is x squared plus four x plus four. 3 squared is, of course, going to be 9. Then x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. Again, x times x is x squared. x times 3, 3x. And then we have this other 3x. That's 6x. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So what we have here is x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 9 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, so it looks like we're dealing with a quadratic equation, but not so fast because we uh, once we clean this equation up, some of you could be like, well, okay, Mr. U2 Math Man, uh, should we, uh, you know, add these numbers together right here? And, you know, you maybe you might just kind of start thinking about quadratic equations. That's excellent. But what you want to do really is to say, hey, are there any opportunities to make this uh, equation simpler? Well, notice here I have x squared and x squared. Okay, now if I subtract x squared from both sides, uh, these x squareds are going to go away. Anytime you have the exact same terms on either side of the equation, these effectively cancel each other out. So I can just get rid of these x squared. And notice I have two 9s right here. I can just get rid of those as well because if I subtract 9 from both sides of the equation, the 9s go away. So that just leaves me with this nice, lovely linear equation, 4x plus 4 uh, is equal to 6x. Okay, that's going to be far easier to solve than messing around with these x squareds. All right, so x, uh, 4x squared plus 4 is equal to 6x. So pretty straightforward stuff here. I can simply subtract 4x from both sides of the equation, and uh, we're going to end up with 4 is equal to 2x. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x will be equal to 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this value now because we're not done, but let's use what we uh, now know, x is equal to 2, to figure out the actual answer. Okay, so here is our right triangle. So this is 3. So if this, if x is equal to 2, what's going to be this side right here? So it's going to be x plus 3 or 2 plus 3, which, of course, is 5. Okay, and then this side right here would be 2, uh, x is 2. So this would be 2 plus 2, which, of course, would be 4. And this would represent the, uh, uh, what we call a Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5, because these are all lovely integer values. And we could check this real quick, right? Let's just actually check this. Remember, the longest side of uh, or the, uh, the biggest uh, um, measure here is always the hypotenuse. So if this is correct, I'll just do this super fast right here. So this is 3, 4, and 5. So let's check these values using the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So a would be 3 squared, right, plus b, which would be 4 squared, okay? And is this going to be equal to c, which is going to be 5 squared, all right? Let's go ahead and do this math here real quick. So 3 squared, of course, is 9 plus 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 is equal to 25. That is true, indicating that, indeed, these values are correct for this particular right triangle. Okay, so pretty standard, straightforward geometry problem. If you, um, again, are going to be taking geometry or are taking geometry, this is a, a problem that you should be able to uh, handle rather easily. Now, if you want to learn this stuff, and maybe you've been away from math for a, uh, a long time. You're like, yeah, I used to do this stuff way back in the 1970s or 80s. Uh, I have an excellent new course for you that you might be interested if you want to kind of, you know, re-strengthen your math skills or relearn math uh, again, or maybe learn math uh, for the first time uh, much better than you actually learned in school. Check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find a link to it in the description. Uh, but I start off with basic math like arithmetic. I teach you a ton of algebra first, and then I teach you a ton of geometry. Always, uh, uh, you, know, you always need to learn some algebra before you get into geometry. And then I even teach you some basic trigonometry and even some probabilities and uh, probability and statistics. So if you're interested in kind of brushing up on math or maybe kind of seeing if you can actually learn math much better than you did the first time around, well, this is the perfect course for you. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.